In this video I'll be discussing Rigler's sign, which is a sign of pneumoperitoneum. At the end of the video I will also look at pneumoretroperitoneum and point out the main differences. This schematic diagram explains what happens in normal individuals. Omentum, or an adjacent loop of bowel, lies in close proximity and touches another loop of bowel. And so the gas within the bowel lumen has an interface with the bowel wall which has the same radiographic density as the omentum. And so the interface is seen and you've got gas on one side and soft tissue on the other side. And the soft tissue has the same density as the bowel wall. When you've got a pneumoperitoneum, you get gas interposed between the omentum and the bowel. In other words, you get gas on this side and on this side of the bowel. And this is represented by not just an interface, but an interface on this side and an interface on the other side. So you can see both sides of the bowel wall. And this is the basis of Rigler's sign. So this is a normal abdominal film. You expect to see an interface here because the gas in the lumen has a different radiographic density to the bowel wall which merges with omentum or adjacent bowel. And so on the x-ray you see an interface between the gas in the lumen and the omentum or abdominal soft tissue. And this is represented by a line which has a sharp interface this side, but not this side. In a patient with pneumoperitoneum, because the gas is now separating the omentum or bowel from the loop of bowel, you are then able to see both sides of the bowel wall because of the silhouette sign. And this is depicted in the diagram here on the abdominal radiograph. You can see both sides of the bowel wall and the bowel wall here has a depth to it which it doesn't have in normal patients. Uh, this illustrates the difference between a normal abdominal film and an abnormal abdominal film where you've got a pneumoperitoneum. Rigler's sign is present here and the interface sign is present here. Also note on the film on the left where you've got pneumoperitoneum, there's a triangle of gas in Morrison's pouch which is a subtle sign of pneumoperitoneum. These calcified lesions here are fibroids. This is a patient who has pneumoperitoneum. You can clearly see that there is gas in the bowel and there's gas in the peritoneum because not only can you see the interface of the bowel wall, but you can actually see both sides of the bowel wall. You can also get the hint that there is a big ovoid area of lucency. And this ovoid area is called the football sign. Not uh, an English football, but an American football. Note also you can see the falciform ligament on the erect chest x-ray. You can also see the football sign over here. And you can see both sides of the diaphragm due to pneumoperitoneum. This is another example. You can once again see both sides of the bowel wall because of the silhouette sign. Gas outside the bowel and gas inside the bowel makes the bowel wall visible. Also you can see a triangle of gas 
and this is not conforming to any anatomical bowel structure and that's because it lies in Morrison's patch and this is a subtle sign of pneumoperitoneum. A little um, higher up because the x-ray has been taken in two stages uh, once again confirms the pneumoperitoneum because of Rigler's sign the ability to see both sides of the bowel wall and there's a cupola sign which is the collection of a dome of gas underneath the dome of the diaphragm. These are calcified fibroids. This is again a subtle sign of pneumoperitoneum. Here's the triangle sign of gas in Morrison's pouch. That is the hepatorenal space. And the corresponding erect chest x-ray shows gas underneath the diaphragm. This is a very subtle pneumoperitoneum in a patient erect chest x-ray. This is due to a perforated duodenal ulcer. Here we can see an erect chest x-ray in a patient who is exhibiting free gas underneath the central portion of the diaphragm, the so-called cupola sign. This is a supine film and again the cupola sign is well seen. Also you can see Rigler's sign, both sides of the bowel wall due to pneumoperitoneum and again here. Corresponding CT shows the falciform ligament. The cupola sign is once again seen, and this is the sagittal reconstruction showing the pneumoperitoneum. Rigler's sign is present on CT just as much as it is present on an abdominal film. In contrast, um, the abdominal radiograph demonstrates pneumoretroperitoneum. Gas collects around the kidney and the adrenal. It is streaky and it is not free to move. There's also some gas around the left kidney. And this has been caused by a colonoscopy where the ascending colon was perforated. And this is a, a retroperitoneal structure. So the gas in the retroperitoneum is vastly different from the gas patterns in a peritoneal rupture. The ERCP images on the right hand side uh, demonstrate a retroperitoneal rupture. The initial ERCP film shows a guide wire in the common bile duct. Don't forget that the ERCP takes place in the second part of the duodenum which is a retroperitoneal structure and any sphincterotomy which is too generous could cause retroperitoneal free gas and the gas goes into the perinephric space in this particular case. Okay, so in summary, Rigler's sign is the ability to see both sides of the bowel wall, so gas within the lumen and gas outside the lumen make the bowel wall visible on both sides, not just an interface. And that is the basis of Rigler's sign. In summary, Rigler's sign is the ability to see both sides of the bowel wall and not just an interface. And it exploits the silhouette sign, which allows structures of different radiographic density to be seen separate from each other. You can also apply this principle to the diaphragm on the erect chest x-ray. And don't forget that Rigler's sign can be applied to CT as well as plain films.